You guys ready? And a one, and a two, and a one, two, three, four. Welcome to Stop Wasting Your Wine. No, not that should have been it. Should have been our audio for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you ready, Joel? You're the white oh, wine. Right. Okay. Oh, where is this from? California. Got it. <laughs> yeah, from hell. <laughs> well, oh, Jesus. Welcome to Stop Wasting Your Wine, a wine review podcast where we waste our wine so you don't have to. On this episode, we review <laughs> a giggly Colin in the basement, <laughs> a white wine from California. Colin doesn't do that again. It was, Joel was making all sorts of faces as I was trying to do the thing. He was pointing and stuff like that. It was. I know. I'm sorry. I'll just be. Stupid. Don't apologize for your joy, Colin. We're all having fun here. It's okay. That's right. That's right. It's supposed to be fun. Welcome to Stop Wasting Your Wine, a wine review podcast where we waste our wine so you don't have to. On this episode, we review a white wine from California. If this is your first time listening, welcome in. If you're one of our amazing repeat listeners, welcome back. My name is Colin and I'm joined by two of the biggest car enthusiasts I know, Joel and Aaron. How you guys doing tonight? Pretty revved up now. <laughs> yeah, big. yeah, you're revved up. <laughs> I like that. Nice car. Well, I thought it was appropriate given, I don't want to, I mean, give a little bit away, but the producer of this wine is Ferrari Carano. So there are two Close. car puns in the wine. So I figured <laughs> I'd start the show off with some more car puns. I can't believe you noticed that the Carano, Carano, like I didn't even make that connection. That's pretty good. I can say, like, I did not. Uh, there's certain things that, like, you know, as a as a man or as a young a boy, you're, you know, you're supposed to be into. Cars was ne- cars was never it for me. Like, I had a lot of Hot Wheels cars yeah. when I was a kid, and, like, that was, like, the end of it. I was never, like, a big, like, getting real re- real revved up, as Joel said, <laughs> about uh, cars. Never my thing. Yeah, it, it kind of was mine. <laughs> Yeah, Always Joel, you're cars. What? Oh, target. you? What are you talking about? <laughs> what, what do you mean, Joel? Yeah, I grew up around cars, grew up around racing. My dad and, and my uncle race cars from the time I was about five all the way on. So I kind of grew up around it and uh, did a little bit of racing, a little amateur racing of my own. Still do it from time to time, but but yeah. Like the coolest hobby of any of my friends, like when you talk to people randomly, but like, what are things you do? You know, like you're the only person in my Pretty life cool. that has that thing that's like, Oh yeah, I race cars sometimes when I just when I get the itch, I go down to the track, do a couple laps. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And I'll tell you, that's why I'm excited for this very car racing related wine. It's like all of my worlds coming together into one. Finally, I'm so this is probably the episode that I am the most excited about ever. And I am on cloud nine. And I just really hope that nothing comes and brings me down and rains on my parade. If you remember the last time we had a wine that we thought was race car related and Joel was so excited about our Jeff Gordon wine. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we had a wine and this yep. is going to be just as exciting. For him. Yeah, that's right. Very excited. I finally, I went back and I dusted off the list of uh, racing and car puns that I had put together back then. And I spent a little bit of time, I not only dusted them off, but I revamped some of them, really just kind of brought them into the now. So I'm excited to try those out on you guys throughout the course of this episode. Unfortunately, much like that wine, this wine, nothing to Mm -hmm. do with actual cars. So, uh, Hmm. at all. Say what now? Not even a little bit. (laughs) Come again? Zero. (laughs) Sorry, Joel, you might have to shove those back down into the pocket. For another car wine episode. Fantastic. Well, Joel, I, since you're so excited about this wine that really just kind of fits your your life and your, your lifestyle, you want to tell the people what we're drinking? This is the Ferrari Carano Fume, Fume? Fume? Fume. Fume. Luar. Fume Blanc from 2022. This is from the North Coast region of California. 13.9% alcohol. We got this from Total Wine for $11.99. The 
thank you, Joel, for letting us know what we're drinking this evening. Enough with the car puns. We have another rant from Aaron. So, Aaron, what are you ranting about this evening? It's time for a history rant with Aaron. I know the car puns are over, but I do want to say this is about the name. When we were thinking about what we wanted to do today, we, we, we kind of thought about the past few wines that we've talked about and over the past few months, we've talked about how sometimes wines are named after the region that they're from. You know, last week we did the Vino Verde and we said, you know, people might not know that that's the region of Portugal, not the, the grape itself you know, say, uh, similar to Cote de Rhone. Some often people associate wines with the grape that it's made from. And today we're going to talk about a wine whose name just came from the air. It just came from nowhere. Because much <laughs> like I think the name Ferrari Carano, I, I think this is a marketing wine. And it has kind of a cool story to it. Before we kind of jump into like this particular estate, we're going to do kind of a, a super fast run through of what the heck Fumé Blanc is. And to know what that is, you have to travel way back in history, way back to the 1960s, uh, <laughs> because you know, wine is is storied and historic. But this particular wine is not. So Fumé Blanc was created entirely from the brain of Rob Mondotti. What? And He's not even French? Not <laughs> even remotely. <laughs> and a lot of it had to do with just really thoughtful marketing. So Fumé Blanc is Savion Blanc. And while at one time there might have been a stylistic difference between Fumé Blanc and Savion Blanc, for the most part now, there is no difference at all came from Rob Mondavi trying to figure out how the heck to sell Savion Blanc in the 1960s. Because it is generally, at least back then, a very difficult wine to sell for a whole lot of kind of hilarious reasons. People would think it is too sweet. People thought it was too acidic. Believe it or not, a lot of people reported that the reason they didn't buy it is because they didn't know how to say it. And they, <laughs> and they felt foolish trying to say like Savion Blanc. And so they just avoided it all together. And so in the 1960s, it was a very hard wine to sell, which created a problem, especially for upstart vineyards uh, in America, because it's a very easy grape to grow. You know, it is one of the most versatile, if not the most versatile grape to grow internationally. Some fun facts I learned while researching this. Savion is based on two French words. Savage, like I feel like that's uh, Johnny Depp's like cologne. Uh, but, great. you know, means like wild and, and vin, vine. So literally named wild vine because it should just grew everywhere. Yeah. It was easy to grow all across Europe. It's easy to grow everywhere. Rob and Davi looked at it and went, this would be something that is great to be able to sell, but people don't like it. But he firmly believed it could be a good wine if people just gave it a shot. So he came up with an idea. He decided to rebrand Savion Blanc. He knows that a lot of people loved the Loire Valley mm -hmm. that I can now pronounce last week's Loire. episode. <laughs> Loire. And there is a region that I am going to butcher that I believe is uh, Puy Fuma, Fume. Puy Fume. Puy. I was so close. You were really close. I'm proud of myself. Pat on the back. <laughs> Puy Fume. And so he took that and they knew, he knew that they had kind of a tradition in that area of taking Savion Blanc and just kind of aging it in oak. And it was just kind of like something that that particular region did. So he said, great, cool. We're going to do that over here. He brought the practice over here. He flipped it into uh, Fumé Blanc. And he just started telling people it was something completely different. He aged it in oak, so it gave it a little bit more of an oaky flavor, a little bit more full body, changed the flavor a little bit. And at that point, it just became kind of exciting for people because it was a new set of words. It was a little bit... People didn't associate it with Savion Blanc. And at that point, he could have very easily patented it as something new. He could have very easily like locked it up as like his thing. But instead, he did the exact opposite. He actually petitioned the ATF 
to say that Fumé Blanc was synonymous with Savion Blanc, yes. that it just means the same thing and made it publicly accessible to every vineyard in the area because he knew that in order for him to sell this, rather than being competitive, he had to make sure that it was everywhere. Mm, build a market for Exactly. Genius marketing. So as soon as he put it out there, other vineyards that, again, Savion Blanc is super easy to grow. It's all over the place. People are trying to figure out how to use that grape. Everyone else in the area went, oh, yeah, cool. And everyone started selling Fumé Blanc, and it blew up. Hell. Huh. And so- Love it. Just like a really brilliant marketing plan to take a grape that was readily available and put it out into the world, totally repackaged. And the crazy thing about it now is because it's simply synonymous with Savion Blanc, most people, I won't say most, but many, many vineyards aren't even doing anything different with it. You know, they're not mind -blowing. aging it. They're not aging it in oak. Like they might ferment it in steel and then move it to oak. They might ferment it in oak and then move it to steel. They might not do either at all, but they can just call it Fumé Blanc because it is legally synonymous with Savion Blanc. But it looks a little bit different. Maybe it's a little bit sexier. And for this one, for uh, Ferrari Carano, they're a pretty young estate. They were founded in the 1980s. And this was one of their first, I think this was the second wine that they produced uh, at their estate. Because again, it was something that they could very quickly grow produce often and since this was one of their first wines instead of just calling it Savion Blanc they called it Fumé Blanc to get it off the ground very cool mind blowing so I wonder why now when Sauvignon Blanc is kind of having a moment and I think it's a pretty popular type of wine to get into you know why why still go with Fumé Blanc why is that still a thing I wonder you know just to be different I guess but yeah, maybe tradition. I mean, this bottle does say Sauvignon Blanc on it, which I think I, I would- Oh, it does? Yes. A lot of them do, and they're like very little writing. Like, it would be like, Fumé Blanc, and then there's like, Savvy B. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find one without Sauvignon Blanc on it, because, I th you know, not a lot of people know what Fumé Blanc is, but like you said, Sauvignon Blanc is, you know, a wildly popular wine nowadays. So it's probably just yeah. tradition, a little bit of marketing. And I mean, I think it, I think at this point, it just it comes down to- Maybe someone wants to find a way to carve out something a little bit different in the market. Now it's like the opposite problem, right? Like before you couldn't sell Sauvignon Blanc because people just kind of like stuck up their noses at it. And now Sauvignon Blanc is very, very popular. So maybe you're yeah. trying to carve out a little bit like this is the query a little bit different. Maybe yep. some estates now are going back to like, okay, we're going to lean more into the oak and make it a little bit richer and a little bit bolder. So it does taste a little bit different. And, you know, a lot of the articles I was reading about this was talking about how, like, Sauvignon Blanc is blowing up in places like New Zealand and Australia now. And you are starting to try see people try to find a variation to make their product stand out. But mm. I think for this one, I think this will be a fun example because this is one that was a foundational wine of this vineyard when they started in, you know, way back That's in the cool. 80s. This is definitely going to be... I was reading a little bit about it. It was definitely aged in oak. So it's, it's like I said, at 13.9%, it's a big Sauvignon Blanc. So probably going to get some more of those ripe flavors. You probably won't experience too much of that. Those grassy notes, just because the grapes mm -hmm. have gotten super ripe. So it'll be interesting to get into this one. I'm just so, I'm still, everything you shared with us, Aaron, is like sinking into my head and my brain wants to, I, it wants some differentiation between Salve Blanc and Fumé Blanc. And I don't think it's going to get it. I'm just going to have to accept it and move on with my life. Aaron, thank you so much. That was, again, another amazing rant with some mind-blowing facts. Joel still seems like he's processing everything. Um, I am. Dude, wine <laughs> history is weird, man. Yeah. Wine history back all the way back to 1518. Dance Plague is weird. And wine history going way, way back to uh, 1986. Also weird. All right. So with that, I think it's time to get into this wine. Uh, okay. Tastes like wine. Let's see what we get on the old schnoz there. I'm going to throw... It was like premium gasoline. Okay, I'm going to throw it to Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. Go for it. Smells like uh, F1 racing. Mm. Luxury leather. 
I don't know are why. You, are you describing Ferraris or the wine? <laughs> I think so. I've never been within 100 feet of a Ferrari, so I don't know what they smell like. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. So, Do you have any actual flavor notes, privilege. or should I just go to Joel? <laughs> you might have to go to Joel. My nose is broken. That's fine. Joel, what do you got? I am going to piggyback a little bit off of what you said there, Aaron, because I do get a little bit of a, I don't know if it's like a, not not quite petroly, but like a little... Um, Slight morality. Yeah, I but I mean, that. even like the, what what's the what's the word that's, you know, it's in plastic and I guess it is petrol. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, but I would say- just a little bit and maybe, maybe it's actually just like the alcohol that I'm picking up on there. And it's mixing with the, I don't know, the vanilla or something like that. I mean, it is, it's a high alcohol one. I, I would say, I would say like naming like what we didn't smell like hats off to Colin for saying ahead of time that based on the way this was made, like we were probably less likely to smell some of those grassy yeah. things that we, that we usually get in, in these like way. And yeah, I was, I normally Spot look on. for that when we get like a, a Savion Blanc or a Pinot Grigio and it's not there. Yeah, yeah. It's not there. It's definitely when, when you said minerality, there's definitely like a lot more of that, like mineral you yeah. know and i think give me, give me the right words calm no i think i think minerality is what joel's picking up on because that's what i get i don't get too much like i don't get too much of that petrol plasticky but i do get some and it's not like stones minerality either it's it's kind of like i don't know it's hard to it's almost like slate or chalk but it's not like a, a rock you would pick up outside after some rain but it's more of that chalky slaty that's what i'm picking up anyway i was gonna say like rock with butter <laughs> you <Yeah>. know <laughs> the buttery rock this is why people don't drink wine guys this is why people <laughs> don't drink wine they they go over to a sticker and it's like this wine tastes like a rock slathered in butter left out in the Somebody rain slapped a rock with some moss <laughs> oh i did get mossy, a name a moss oh uh, <laughs> i said it's a lie it's like a wet rock covered in moss but you know, you don't get, it's also like you don't get those citrusy notes that we've gotten in other uh, whites. I'm not getting those as much. You get a little bit of lemon, I think. And then, but the, the fruit is very ripe, I'll say. Yeah. I'm definitely picking up some grapefruit here, but it's almost like, yes. it's not like sour grapefruit, if that makes sense. It's almost like, it's like ultra ripe to me. And then, I don't know, maybe like a little, just a, like a smidgen of peach, but it's not, definitely not like one of the, the main players. Just like, hi, I'm peach. <laughs> <laughs> that was adorable. I would say it feels like really, we're little, really digging man. here. We're like sometimes we name a yeah. whole lot of different things For sure. because it's so complex and interesting that we come up with a lot. And I feel like this is more like this is here. Hello, like we're like digging for. It. I don't think it's because there's not stuff happening, but I think it's because they're not like the sharp, defined notes that you would get in maybe something that's trying to be a little bit fresher. You know, we've been talking about how it's it's the muted, a lot of muted things going on here. So I think there is a lot, but it's just, I can't pick out one from the other. Yeah, this is a good candidate for smells like wine. You know, yeah, it smells just, like wine. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, yeah. it, it, it smells nice. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I don't think the smells are, are, are bad, but they are just sort of all, I think they're all just very big. There's no nuance to this wine, really at least on the nose. So it'll be interesting to try it and see if we're able to pick anything more up. I will say too, like this is an $11.99 bottle of wine. And this is now two weeks in a row that we are way in the basement price wise. Mm -hmm. Last week, I think we really named was like a unique, a lot to do with the region, a lot to do with just the, the lack of knowledge around Portuguese wine. This is not that, right? Like this is a coming from a region that is just completely covered in wine and wine options so we are looking at an 11 dollar and 99 cent bottle of wine i i have to say based on that price point for a, a savion blanc out of california the smell is, is not as scary as i thought it was going to be for that price point so like we'll see we'll get into the taste and see what's going on but you know, maybe maybe we're two weeks in a row of, of finding, you know, not bad, like, sub-$15 wines. Speaking of getting into the taste, I think this would be a great opportunity to do that. So let's take a sip. All right. Oh, Joel, how are you feeling about the sip? Okay. A little bit more that I can pick out here. Still some of the same thing going on, though, with there being kind of a hodgepodge, but I'm definitely getting more of the lemon mm-hmm. aspect. Agreed. 
and a little bit more of the you know definitely that minerality but that, a little bit of, of that honey ness too like there is a there is a creaminess to all of it that may not be making it easier to pick out the actual note yeah and i think the creaminess comes from so this is aged in neutral barrels neutral meaning that the barrels they don't really impart any flavor so it, it is going to have a little bit of a creamier mouthfeel as opposed to something that's aged in stainless steel which is going to have that kind of sharp bright in your face acidic kick although i will say this is this is pretty acidic there's definitely no lack of acid here but and i think that's just the grape is an ultra acidic grape but i would say there's something in and colin help me out with what this is there is something missing about the overall structure that you know last week when we had the vino verde we were all very surprised for a six dollar wine that it had kind of lasting flavor grippiness mouthfeel acidity that felt very full and structured for such a low cost wine this is acidic but there's also there there's something missing as far as i i don't know uh, there's something it's creamy it's acidic but what is it yeah help me out yes yeah, so, well i mean last week had a little bit of residual sugar and super high acid so that balanced out nicely this is like ultra dry this is almost bordering dry f like this is a super dry wine and it but it's also super acidic and then what what brings it up and sort of changes that mouth feels that barrel aging so it, it just doesn't have the same components i wouldn't say it's it's not well balanced because I, I i think it is but it's just it's different than what you would expect from let's say new zealand sauvignon blanc that hasn't seen mm -hmm. an oak barrel that's been only stainless steel that's going to be like super bright and racy and acidic this has that sort of creamy undertone so I, I'm definitely getting some of that grapefruit, some of that uh, lemon, I think. maybe, And I think that the peach is still peaching. Um, <laughs> so, just a wee little peach. Just in the background. <laughs> yeah. And there's some other fruitier notes. And again, it's all very ripe, but it is, it is definitely considerably different than what you would find from a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc or a Sauvignon Blanc that hasn't seen some, some oak aging genuinely curious here do any other regions outside of california call their soft block fume block or is that just like a total california thing uh i to my knowledge it's california only i, I don't believe you'll find that anywhere else definitely not in old world i would agree <laughs> that's yeah. right i've never seen well, there's new Fumé zealanders ever do yeah, I don't think so. They're pretty proud about that their Sauvignon good. Blanc. So I think we've uh, had a good conversation about this wine. We've tried it. We've smelled it. We've laid out some flavors. I think it's time to get into... <laughs> <laughs> I get this... Flavor flames. I think it's time to get into the review. Yeah, but did they like it? It's time for the review. So. I'm going to go with Aaron. I want you to start us off with the review this time. Absolutely. I will say I am relatively impressed for an $11.99 wine out of Northern California. I generally expect a wine at that price to be concerning now that I've spent so much time with you gentlemen. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's terrible. I, I wouldn't say it's a kitchen table wine. It's not something I would put out excitedly for everyone and you know it, it's not something that i would probably pick up again because as joel has said in the past like just spend the extra few dollars for something that's just a little bit higher quality but i would i would i would not turn up my nose at this like i would drink another glass of it i have drank half the bottle so far uh <laughs> and at 13.9 percent, that's probably not great so I'm, I'm putting this firmly in in my closet i think this is a great backup i would keep a bottle around in case you know we wanted to grab a late night bottle or we're running out of uh of wine i wouldn't i wouldn't say no to this but I, i'm not celebrating it either i think it is fine joe misleading car related naming aside i am grateful that they're doing something a little bit different with the soft blanc but boy i i miss those those i miss that steel 
This is, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's different. It's fun to try and to try to figure out. But at the end of the day, I, I don't think I'm going back for, for any more. So for me, it's, it, and I, I don't think it's a quality issue for me. I think it's a style issue. Like it, it does, I think it tastes like it's well made. You know, they're trying to do something good here. I definitely, I definitely think that. It's just stylistically, it's just something that I'm not, I'm not super into here. So I am putting this in the closet. Surprise, surprise. My closet grows a little bit bigger <laughs> and that's where it's going. <laughs> Joel pulls open the closet door to put this wine in and it's just buried in yeah. bottles clinking over him. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I don't even open the door. I just just slightly, it's slightly ajar so I can fit it in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna agree with Joel when he said it. I think it's a it's a well made wine. It's definitely, I, I think it's well balanced. The, the fruit flavors are are ripe. It's definitely a different style than we're we're all used to. And I think I'm gonna be a, a bit of a contrarian here. And I think for twelve bucks, I'm gonna put this one on the table. You know, I it's it's I definitely it. not. Um, Aaron looks like I just. Ran what can't yeah <laughs> what what the world is upside down yeah no i i think i think this is as good as the the wine from last week and maybe it's double the price but still it's only tw it's only 12 dollars. but you're gonna you're gonna bring this to a dinner you're gonna put it out for people you're gonna talk about the ferrari car people and their 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 fume wine yeah Listen, I think stylistically it's different from most, and maybe that might hang up on some people. It's not at the front of the kitchen table per se, but if it's in between the, the front of the closet or the back of the kitchen table, I think it's good enough to put at the back of the kitchen table. It's just, you know, it's not it's 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 not gonna blow you away. There's no doubt about that. But it's also for twelve dollars. Remember, we're not this is not a twenty four dollar bottle of wine. This is a twelve dollar bottle of wine. For the style, it's it's different and it's it's tasty. Like I'm enjoying it, so you know it's it, you know I, I might not be absolutely celebrating it as the best wine in the world, but again, for twelve dollars, I think it's it's worth a spot towards the back of the table. Controversy, yeah, I know it's funny because in my brain, as we move into the next section, I was thinking to myself, we haven't had a real conversation about whether or not a wine is a waste of your wine for a while. Because our the the mm -hmm. wines over the past couple of months have been very cut and dry. They've either been like just not good, or it's it's just like not a waste. Clearly, because of where we've landed, and I thought this was going to be uh, a spicier one, and maybe it is. Uh, but I was thrown off by Ooh. the move to the table because I think that throws off the dynamic. I don't know. I mean, yeah. do, would would either of you guys say this is a waste of wine at at twelve dollars? I, I think okay. I might. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't, there, there's, wow. there's something there. And again, like this is the beauty of our show is that <laughs> it's not just a number scale that's going to be like cut and dry. It's a little bit of a debate. Debate is good for democracy. And uh, there's just, there's just something about it that we, we've kind of had this back and forth where it's like, I wouldn't buy it, but I drink it. But if I bought it, you know, or if someone gave it to me, it would be fine. I wouldn't recommend for someone to buy this is, is, is the, is the thing I'm stuck on. Right. Like that's the last, last week's wine. Not only would I recommend people to buy it, I have six balls of it in my closet. Like, <laughs> cause it was good and it was cheap. Th this is fine. But I, I, I'm stuck on that place of like, if I'm going to spend $12 on a bottle of wine, I'm going to spend $15 on a bottle of wine and just get something slightly better. And so that that's why I'm like in the weird is the waste, not a waste place. But I'm not offended by where What's anyone lands. So you you're officially know. saying it's waste. You had to pick one, man. This is not this is not the B yeah. middle ground <laughs> on wine show. Podcast. It's possibly a waste of some of your wine. <laughs> nope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I won't toss this one on social media. I, I think personally, I would say it's a waste of your wine. Me. Wow. Sure. As the leading wine expert on this show. I think if it was $2 more, 
I'd have a really hard time with this one. Since it is eleven ninety nine, and again, as I've said, it's not a poorly made wine. I'm going to say it's not a waste of your wine if what we've described to you sounds right up your alley. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to say not a waste of your wine. I just, I, I'm shocked with that close to be honest for twelve bucks, like. Maybe stylistically, it's different than what you would expect, but as far as just the wine in the bottle is concerned, it's 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 decent. You know, it's good. I'm enjoying it. So I would say clearly not a waste of your wine. I would I would probably if I wanted this style of Sauvignon Blanc, I'd for twelve bucks, I would buy this again. It's enjoyable. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. So that's great. That's why there's that's why there's three of us. That's you know that's why we can't have four because then it would be a tie and that would be right. stupid. Can't so yeah, do. I would say. Obviously, not a waste from from my camp, from Camp Colin. So, so yeah. Right. So there we go. A little, not a, a, little not a waste of your wine, ladies and gentlemen. A little, a little spicy. A little for for some we reason. Got tossed yeah. a little spice every close. now yeah. and then. A little you know, spicier than close. I thought it was going to be. To be honest, like yeah. I really, it's I appreciate it, but I was I was a little shocked. So I'm just trying to get a little edgier with my uh, you know, my wine ratings. I'm such a no, I like that. I appreciate usually. that. All right, so I'll let. Joel, you want to do the social medias thing? Yeah. Or do you want? Okay, I would, cool. I know Joel I'd nails to. This, so I'd I'd love to hear you do it. Joel, tell the I've people. Really, I've been working on it. I've been getting a little bit more involved. When I say involved, like I look at it more. I'm not making anything. That's still all you guys. But <laughs> just accept my invites to collaborate. I don't know how. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, listen, check us out. Definitely, you know, go go check out the Facebook. We're there. Stop wasting your wine. You can find us. Uh, where the real love is right now, I got to tell you, is on the Instagram at Stop Wasting Your Ooh, Wine. Yeah, baby. Really happening out there. A lot of fun. Also, uh, I believe we're on the TikToks now. How's that going, Aaron? Oh, uh, we're TikToking. Uh, basically, <laughs> what TikTok is for me is downloading our Instagram videos and putting them on TikTok. But Colin Dancing so, is coming really soon. So if you love what we're doing on Instagram and you want to see the same content on another platform, go ahead and check us out on TikTok as well. Sometimes the songs are different. Sometimes the songs are different, y'all. Check that out. Uh, and then also you can find us on uh, on YouTube. Stop wasting your wine. And, and also just wherever you're listening. By the way, thanks for listening. Really appreciate you. And wherever you're doing that, tell your friends. Give us a follow if you haven't already. Uh, give us a rating if you'd like to. And uh, Please. we'll check that out. Yeah. How did I do? Was that good? That was great. That was great. Cool. You've really evolved good. in your social media presentation skills. Seriously. So I appreciate that. Well done. Well done. Oh, so good. You can do tomorrow's uh, Instagram post. Okie dokie. Well, come, yeah. hey, come check it out. See what I come up with on the first Joel <laughs> Instagram post the day after this airs. So you will on, on, on uh, three. Six. I am gonna do my first Instagram post. Check it out. It's gonna be wild. March sixth. I was joking, but now it's super now you're official. So yeah, now, it's a thing. Yep, yeah, we're doing it. Just so just so everyone knows, we record about a week ahead of time. So Joel yeah. has eight days or less to like figure out Instagram. I got it. I'm. I've already got ideas. It's gonna be thirty seconds of black screen, <laughs> <laughs> and then just at the last branches. <laughs> Stop wasting your wine. And, and a Tom Petty song playing in the background. Oh, That's pretty much it. Brilliant. It doesn't get much better. Come on. Ugh. God, we're so screwed. <laughs> so screwed. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. This has been an, what, what ended up being a rather spicy at the end episode. So that was, that was fun and exciting. And oh. we will see you next time. Bye, y'all. Hey, and remember, stop wasting your wine. Bye. Bye.